we got to at least talk about the rock. Mm. The rock is back. And in a big way, he's on the board. And I said to myself, self, <laughs> how weird is it that Vince McMahon, not on the board, all of it, not on the board, but the rock is part of the terms of that agreement. As I understand is he gets at the time, what was valued at roughly $30 million worth of stock. That's probably 15, 20% higher now. And he got the rights to his name back. As I understand it for years and years, if he was billed as the rock in a movie build WWE, or maybe specifically Vince McMahon got a producer credit and he had to pay tribute as they used to say in the mafia, according to the Sopranos. Um, we know now the rock is here to stay, not just on camera, whatever that may wind up being, but he's got a job on the board and considering his relationship with endeavor and Nick Khan, and the fact that he is the biggest movie star in the world and Netflix happens to be in that business. <laughs> well, it sure does make a whole lot of sense. What say you Conrad? You you're so much better at this than, than, um, and I, I don't know because I have been at, yeah, I'll say this since that came out last week, I've had multiple buddies text me, Hey man, help me out here. What exactly does that mean that Dwayne Johnson is sitting on the way? Cause I got, we could talk about this the whole pie. Cause this is fascinating to me in a very look. Uh, first time I met rock uh his dad called him dewey so he was 14 years old um but the board help me out Conrad, because it is a because you you explain it better but it's it's he's not an employee he it's 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 how many is on that board eight to ten but they're re but they're independent i call them businessman it wouldn't that be a safer way to say it just what 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 the what it represents is much to me the, the, the when you really inside baseball and pull the layers back and pull the layers back and pull the layers back he's on the board that owns it's endeavor it's tk i mean it's tko's board it it is it's very impressive you want to help me out there connie just kind of in buddy it is such a wild thing i mean i'm going to run through the the board members of tko good the the, the, the good Carrie Wheeler, Carrie Wheeler, she was, uh, she's the director of TKO group holdings. So she's on the board here. She served as CEO and board member on open door since December, 2022. So she's on the board. Nancy Tellum also on the board. This is back in September of 2023 when this was formalized. Um, she's been the executive chairperson and chief media officer of what used to be known as interlude us. She's previously worked for Xbox too. Sonia Medina. She was the president and CEO of reach resilience. She was appointed to the board in September of 2023. Hope you're noticing the trend here. Carrie, Nancy, Sonia, uh, Jonathan Kraft. He too is on the board since September. He's the president of craft group LLC since July of 1995. Mm. Steve Coonan. He's the CEO of the Atlanta Hawks since 2014. He's also on the board of TKO. Nick Khan, We all know very well, Brad Keywell. He's on the board. He's the founder of uptake technologies, which is an artificial intelligence software company. I don't know if you're picking up what I'm putting down there. Mm -hmm. uh, Egon Durbin, he's the co executive officer of Silver Lake, which is a tech investment firm. He's been on the board as well since September of 2023. Take note. Uh, uh, Peter C.B. Bino, I screwed that name up. Uh, he has been a senior advisor and equity partner at DLA Piper LLP, which is a global law firm, board member since September of last year. We know Ari Emanuel, he's the big boss. He's the chief executive officer and he's got a lot of ties here. A little company called Endeavor. 
Uh, he's been the director of Endeavor since June of 09. And he served as the CEO since 17. And Endeavor is worth a Google if you're not familiar with this stuff. And then, of course, there's Mark Shapiro. He's the president and chief operating officer. He's also been with Endeavor. He's coming over from Endeavor. So you got a lot of people who are in that business. And now, seemingly out of nowhere, here's Dwayne Johnson. So this, he, it's, a, it's a crazy group, is it not? Well, that's, I mean, I, I'm glad you went through them one by one because it, the board of directors, look, everybody that's simple, hey, I'm going to invest in Exxon or, or Mobile or, or Walmart or Apple, but you invest in TKO, it, like any board of directors, it's a group of businessmen and women who guide the ship that their their single job is to make sure if you invest in their company, you get your money back and a return. And when you put Dwayne, when you put little Dewey alongside all that coming from seven bucks in his pocket to a wrestling star, to a movie star, to a businessman with Under Armour and tequila and football league and, and everything that goes with it, but he's sitting on that board. Hats off to him. It is amazing. What a payday. Uh, we'll get to his uh, IP in just a second. Cause there was something about that that just kind of surprised me. Um, but, but Conrad to me, when I know Ari super powerful and Shapiro, but we talk about in our business, hey, this guy's on top and that guy's on top. And we were supposed to be talking about Lawler today because uh, he, he would have been on top uh, for a lot, a lot of years. To me, Dwayne, I own the rock now. Johnson is on top of the industry. They're going to look to him on that board for wrestling expertise. Not, not, not business expertise. But when you really drill it down and they're sitting around the table on having to make decisions, Ari is brilliant in talent. There's no doubt about it. Nick Khan, deal maker, brilliant in talent. Uh, he was a uber, uber, uber mega, uh, uh talent agent for, for years and his success. But when you get right down to the professional wrestling component of it, and there is, it, there's, as Dutch would say, wrestling logic, Connie, me and you, and he's like, only in this business, Jeff, all those kind of things. But when you drill it right down, The Rock is the most powerful man in wrestling today. It's crazy to think about, but it's hard to argue because he's got so much influence in so many other areas. And I think the natural question is, hey, does Rock have anything else that TKO might be interested in? You know, he's got that little football league. Uh, and they just did a bit of a merger themselves. I mean, that feels like that's the next step. And it does feel like, you know, he's with the right group of animals to go help make those deals happen. When I say animals, I'm just so impressed by yeah. what Nick Khan has been able to do to grow this company in such a short period of time. You know, I know that he's sort of behind the scenes, but goodness gracious, it feels like he's been pulling all kinds of strings and, um, I'm excited to see what's next for WWE. Unfortunately, just because Vince McMahon has resigned and, and, and I guess that document has been filed since we've been recording this morning, uh, Jeff, it is official. It is documented now, uh, that he has resigned his position as a board member. Can, can we, before, before we go into that, can we talk about the IP of the rock? Yeah. So, and you know, these years much better than I do, but he, he went away and came back and did the, we'll kind of call it the trilogy, uh, with Cena, right? Okay. What years were those? I, I just help me out here, but cause it's, uh, we'll call it 2011, 2012. Somewhere. Okay. Why didn't he, he say, yeah, I'll come do those three, but I want my name back. Why didn't he use that card then? Well, I mean, why didn't it's hypothetical? I mean, you know, like it, 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 I thought he owned it already. No, 
no, I knew he was still paying a fee, but I kind of think there were some hurt feelings once upon a time because they let his contract expire and they acted like it just slipped through. So this was a long time ago, but years ago, he, this is back when Jr. I think was still running talent relations. They just let the deal lapse. I think they were paying him, but he wasn't doing anything and his contract wasn't renewed. And I guess he was in his feelings about it. And there were some hurt feelings for a while and then they patched it together. And, but I, I feel like Vince McMahon, boy, I, I don't know the man well enough to say this, but reading what we read recently, it feels like he likes the idea of quote unquote, owning people. Like, why would you not let the undertaker, a guy who did it all for you too, undertaker can't make appearances as undertaker. He's got to call himself Mark Calloway. So if he'll do that to somebody who was with him for day one for 30 something years, why would we think he wouldn't do that for the rock? My, but my point being, and I'm going to just say this. You felt like the rock had the leverage to ask for it then? In 2011, I still think he was, if not the biggest, right up there, top five, most powerful man in Hollywood. He didn't need the WWE without question. He he could have uh, gone on. Anyway, it's just a hypothetical. So when I heard that news, I'm like, wait, he didn't already play that card way back when? Uh, I just thought that. But him getting that. What I'm curious now, another, this is just a sidebar, Connie, and and I don't know if you've discussed this on any other podcast, but now that Dwayne owns The Rock, and probably there's some associated marks with that, Brother Dawkins may may be able to help us out. But I say that to say, it's going to be curious to see what Seven Bucks and whatever his team, how are they going to monetize The Rock differently? that they thought to themselves, a deal come across the table. No, I I don't do that. There's a lot of red tape and, and the the pie may be cut too thin and this is going to go there. And this is going to go there. We'll pass. I'm just curious to see he got it back. And I know it's very personal because his dad's Rocky and everything that the emotional. And I think he said that uh, in one of his interviews last week, but now that he has it, how's he going to monetize it? Cause I, I definitely think he's got a plan for it. And yes, it is a personal family name, if you will, but I just see him monetizing it, uh, in a way that is not on everyone's bingo card right now. That's all I'll say on a ballot bingo card. (laughs) I'm asking on a ballot. Do you think we'll see it on a ballot? No, you don't think the rock ever runs for anything? No. For obvious reasons. I don't know if they're obvious or not, but I, I just. What do you mean? You don't know if they're obvious or not. Look what's happened in the last week or so there there's skeletons in closets. I'm not making any comparison, but I'm saying oh, goodness okay. gracious. If you've been on top of the world as a public person for 30 freaking years, somebody no. somewhere is upset, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think that's the reason I, I think rock is an entertainer and there's 50 ish percent Republicans and 50% Democrats. Why piss either side off? Well, it just feels like to me, it's not worth the hassle. I think we're saying the same thing. Like I'm just saying it becomes a mudslinging competition when you, when you jump in there. Now it becomes, man, let's just look for absolutely anything. Cause there a bad tweet from 12 years ago we can find or whatever. It's, it's, it's a whole nother level now on that. It will fabricate stuff. Look, the AI stuff that that they put on out on Taylor. Yeah. but but here's a, a a light bulb. Okay, Taylor's a grown woman, and she's in the public eye, and arguably, yeah, she she is the hottest musical act that's that's come along. She's breaking Garth Ruck, Br- Brooks records and others, record, all that kind of stuff. She's in the public eye. You know what? It ain't the worst thing that's ever happened to her, or whatever. But I didn't realize, and this is what I saw on different news blips. This technology, kids can use it in high school. And, and do it. It's it's a form of bullying, if you will, man, the, 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 the youth and the kids of today and they're resilient and it's sign of the ages, but my gosh, Connie, it they is got it rough, Bubba. It's just different, man. It, it is. Yeah. I mean, it's, 
and and maybe our parents said that about us. Oh, it's a different world. Them going to school these days, it's different. I know in every generation, but my gosh, using that kind of AI technology to to bully others. Mm, mm, mm. Conrad, so many rabbit holes we could go in today. Keep it rolling. <laughs>